Welcome, welcome. I'm Dr. Bart Radmaker, Prescription for Your Transformation, Real People, Real Conversations, and Real Success. And, you know, this platform really is about enlightening others who listen to this to give them new insights, new inspirations to actually change their life. And these are real-time stories of real people and the challenges that they have to meet and overcome so that they can be the mentors and the leaders and the, and the light for us to make the changes in our life. And I'm just absolutely astounded by the, the caliber of the people that I get to meet and talk to and, and really learn from. And, and today especially, I, it's a true honor for me to have met this young man and to know what kind of life he's undergone and the challenges he's you know, chosen to, to meet and overcome so that he can be an amazing inspiration for the rest of the world because he truly is one of those guys that you want to meet, that you want to listen to, that you want to learn from so that you can transform your life. A new prescription for you. And Scott Chesney, thank you so much for joining us today on the eve of a great event that's happening tomorrow, I guess, right? <laughs> Absolutely. How are you, Dr. Rademacher? Pleasure to be I'm here great. with you. Yeah, thank you so much. And, you know, again, it, it's when people get to hear your story, the transformative story of, of you, um, they will have to change their lives. So uh, I'm not going to spill the beans yet about, you know, the challenges that you had to overcome. Um, I want to start off with that period of time of what life was like for you before that event many, many years ago. Uh, life was all about movement. Um, I f football, basketball, baseball it was so difficult to get me to sit down and read a book. And uh, I, I, I just loved anything that involved movement. I mean, you, you, sitting down, reading a book, being in school, I, I hated all that. I just wanted to be um, out there. I wanted to be with my friends. I wanted to be with their family, any type of activity I was up for. And, and so um, it was almost like the faster life got, um, the more enjoyable it became for me. So what, what age were you? This was for the first 15 years of my life. First right. 15 years of my life was all about movement. There was no, uh, there was no disability. There was no paralysis, nothing. And, and your thoughts of the next 15 years at that time, you know, your yeah. future, your aspirations. I, it was simply two. I, I can't even say in graduating high school at the time because uh, <laughs> I, I just assumed that was going to happen. I, I right. wanted to go to the University of Oklahoma and, and play quarterback for the Sooners. And if that didn't happen, I was going to go to University of North Carolina where Michael Jordan played. And I was going to play basketball for the Tar Heels. So one of those two, um, I, I was like driven to make happen. I don't know if either one would have ever happened. We'll, we'll never know. But those were it, just those two paths for me at that time in my life. So one of your favorite pastimes these days um, is surfing, right? Surfing. Love surfing. I, I can't <laughs> say that was one of my dreams to become a professional surfer. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, that was uh, – and still to this day, I, I just love um, everything about surfing. I, I mean, you could talk about the movement. You could talk about the – um, just the, the frequency and the repetitive waves that would come in. But um, it's one of those things that, I, unfortunately, I never did. I never got up on a board. Um, I was what we call, and I don't know if they call them out there on the West Coast. I was uh, here on the East Coast. When you rent out a place, you're, you're called a mm -hmm. Benny. Um, okay. Locals are, is it the same way out West? Sedona. I don't <laughs> I don't know if it was the same way, the same place out west. <laughs> I, don't I don't know that much about that, honestly. So if you're, well, if she, she, she's a desert rat. So she's she, a she desert. There's no water in the desert. Why are we asking her? So yeah, um, I, I, I don't know. But so locals are those who are there all year long. I was a Benny um, down there three weeks with my family every year, and um, had one of those uh, styrofoam um, belly boards that I would kind of ride across the wave and everything, but um, I can't even say it was the courage. I don't know why. I hung out in a surf shop there all the time. I never got on my feet on a board and um, don't have too many regrets in life. That's probably one of them. That might be at the top of the list. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
and then and then of course something happened and and i just want to spend like one or two minutes on that and i know it's the past and you've moved on and um and with some tremendous insights that you get to share with us today but what did happen so on december 28th 1985 i woke up the morning after high school basketball game and i had a numb big toe like when your foot falls asleep or part of your body those pins and needles Thought nothing of it. 48 hours later, that numbness went up one leg, went up a second leg and left me paralyzed from about my belly button down to my toes. Uh, there was no accident, no injury, no trauma. Doctors determined that I was born uh, with an AVM, an arterial venous malformation, and that I could have gone my whole life without anything happening, but it was almost like a sleeping volcano. And at that moment, the blood vessels burst, bled, put pressure on the cord and left me paralyzed, unable to move and feel normally again from my belly button down to my toes. So um, I'm still, Dr. Rademacher, I'm still somewhat uncertain as to exactly what happened. I was just um, pleased that it stopped where it did because they were getting ready to put me on a, a ventilator. I, I didn't know if it was going to affect my arms. I didn't know when it was going to stop um, creeping up my body. Yeah, that must have been pretty scary with, with all that uncertainty at that time. Um, it, it actually, looking back on it now, yeah, it, 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 I think it, it should have been terrified for that 15 year old, but you know what, it, it, everything kind of happened so quickly and it hit a pause button for me in my life that as I shared with you was going so fast, um, that it's almost like, I almost want to say subconsciously, I, I welcomed the pause. So, right. uh, I thought I was sick. I thought I was going to get better. And uh, this was going to leave my body at that point in my life. So um, the, the real grieving, the real loss, I don't think uh, affected me for probably about another dozen years afterwards. Right. But now today, you're an inspiration for your family and other people. And it's just living my life. I, I know there's some people out there with disabilities who don't like to be called inspiration because they say, well, I'm just, I'm, I'm living my life. And, and they get upset when people refer to them as an inspiration and uh, motivator, whatever it may be. Um, I welcome that. Dr. Rademacher, if there's anybody whose life um, I can enhance through my own example, through my own actions, through my own service to other people, I was like, right. that, that's fulfilling my purpose. I'm not here to judge. So um, the more people I can inspire to seek higher ground, to elevate their own lives, the better. You know, I've, I've led a very blessed life and um, been very fortunate. Grew up in five different countries. Was able to go to medical school when I was 17 in Europe and have done so many things that I'm, that I'm very grateful for. And, and when I, when I, hear the kinds of stuff that happen to people. And then I can be in a position like you are in a position to help them, support them, give them new insights. Uh, it, it's one of the most wonderful things. I mean, my emotional currency, if you will, is seeing other people succeed. And it really doesn't matter where you're coming from. It really doesn't matter what your past is. And, and some people are lucky with great, you know, um, blessed lives where no major trauma has happened and, and some others aren't. <clears throat> and it's really up to us then to get to focus uh, on what, what is possible, and what's great in life. I mean, I'll be honest with you. One of the things that I, that I thought for the longest period of time was, shoot, you know, my, my life isn't bad enough, so I'm not going to amount to anything because I'm looking at these, these people that have terrible lives or terrible challenges and look what they've done with their lives, which is so much more than what I'm doing with mine, you know? And so it can go both ways, but the truth is, is that it's still a choice and you've made very, some very specific choices. So one of the things that you do talk about, right, is, is gratitude. And so share with us a little insight uh, about that. And, and then I like to add something of my own uh, on the part of gratitude. Absolutely. Well, in my work as a speaker and also a life coach, I'm, I'm constantly being asked, you know what, Scott, uh, I'm in a funk or 
uh, life is so mundane for me. Like, uh, uh, how can I make a change? What's the, the, the secret remedy? What's, what, what's the pill I need to take? And I say a great place is going to a place of gratitude. And a lot of people look at me like mm -hmm. I got three eyes. And I said, no, I was like, no matter what's going on in our lives, there's always room for gratitude. And I, I say this no matter what the situation may be. And I tell them that like for every one thing that's legitimately challenging, and, and maybe painful or sad or depressing about your life. I was like, there's at least 10,000 things that are awesome about your life. And so much of which we take for granted. So it's that that's the quickest way. And I mean, I, I'm all about feeling your feelings and whatever emotions come up, whatever challenges, you know, you feel those emotions, but you know, you, you kind of turn the corner quickly when you move to that place of gratitude. And then you find a way to be even grateful for those depressing or, or sad or challenging moments. Cause there's always with everything that happens to us in our lives and every choice that we make, there's an opportunity for us to grow and learn more about ourselves and other people. So it's almost like I'm grateful for absolutely everything in my life, every single experience, every single choice, even the one to be on with you tonight is that, you know what, everything has led me up to where I am right now which is a wonderful moment that I'm sharing with you. So why would I want to change anything? Right. And I'm, I'm convinced that when you can take full responsibility for all your choices, you're not only free here in your mind, but more importantly, you're free here in your heart. And then you can subscribe to the belief that anything is possible. And, and that's a choice, right? I mean, that you are actively choosing. And I'm sure there's moments where you have an experience that you really don't like. Um, but you also choose to turn around, right? Well, you know what? It was almost a year ago today is that I broke my femur. So you might think, wait a minute, paralysis is enough for him. I broke my right leg, um, adaptive surfing. So surfing, doing everything on a wave except standing up. So I broke my femur and it was such a devastating moment. It was the first wave of the season. So looking forward to a brand new wetsuit and at that moment, it was a day before Father's Day. I have two beautiful kids, a wonderful wife. And I'm just like, like I had that moment. And I remember just sitting there and I had my whole team talking to me. And I'm there and I'm feeling my feelings and I'm getting worked up. But all of a sudden, what was interesting, within a matter of time before I even got to my van to get changed to go to the hospital, is that I said to myself, wow, this could have been a lot worse. Um, I could have broken my neck. I could have died. I, I can't tell you, Dr. Rademacher, how many people are in my life right now who I know who have paralysis from their neck down to their toes, who can't move anything, who can't breathe on their own, who have a ventilator to breathe for them, who are in that situation because of what an ocean wave did to them. So while I, I don't feel sorry for them because they're they're choosing to thrive and not just survive like myself and but realizing how you know what there's room for gratitude even in moments following like shattering your um your, your femur and your leg a paralyzed leg so um i'm i'm never never lost when it comes to gratitude, gratitude will always surface to the top and it'll be something to allow me to move forward. You know, um, I, I have an, an experienced a lot of tough situations. Um, and I'm not going to go into details of those kinds of situations, um, but uncomfortable situations, nasty situations. And I would always look at it from the perspective, of, okay, you know what? I'm going to turn this around. You know, I, I um, in, in fact, in, as a resident for, at one time, uh, one of the psychiatrists came, came up to me. And if anybody's familiar with residency, it's, it's a pretty intense and tough, tough experience. It's almost inhuman. Um, I remember a time that I was on call for 72 hours straight and actually operating in surgery don't don't share this with anybody else, okay? But <laughs> operating in surgery for 36 hours nonstop. I mean, nonstop, okay? This is actually operating on the microscopes and all that kind of stuff. 
But the, what, what surprised the, the psychiatrist was he, she, she said to me, you always look happy. And I just had this, this knack or skill uh, or choice to start looking at things. Okay, what, what's great about this? What can be better? I, I wasn't consciously doing it. I was just doing it. And so there's a great saying out there is that what's wrong in life is always available to you. And also, so what's right. And, and you talk to some of the most successful people in the world. Um, and this is a story from, from Tony Robbins. Uh, I forget who he was talking to and the billionaire, uber successful and asking him, you know, what's your secret? And it's just that it's gratitude. Mm -hmm. The challenge that I, and I'm curious to see, you know, what you say about this, but the challenge is that, you know, when you talk to people about gratitude, like you said, they look at you like you're an alien. <laughs> so, so what else do you tell them or share with them to, that can help them, you know, get to that place of gratitude because sometimes they're just angry and, and right. I want to hear your thoughts and I have two of mine. But there's a bridge there. There's a bridge between where they're at, which isn't usually a very pleasant place. Cause if you're not in that, if you're not in a challenging place, you're probably in some place of gratitude. So uh, there's a gap there. I like to say a bridge and I like to bridge that gap with feeling your feelings. So you mentioned anger. If someone's angry, I want to do everything possible to help that person get their anger out. Uh, I want to go scream at the sky with them. I want to go punch a punching bag. Um, hopefully they're not going to hurt themselves or hurt someone else, but it's so important for us to feel our feelings. Uh, I'm always sharing with people is that there's three things we can do with our emotions. There's projection, there's suppression, or there's a healthy expression. And the projection is the blame game. That's only distancing yourself from resolving the own issue, your own issue. But there's the suppression in which we keep everything locked up inside and feeling like we have to be like uh, isolated on an island and figure everything out for ourselves. And then there's that healthy expression. And I like what I just shared with you is that whether it's communicating with someone, screaming at the sky, punching a punching bag, some type of exercising, even journaling. If you're thinking some of my strategies are barbaric, I mean, you, you can write things down, you can translate them, you can do some kind of voiceover, whatever it may be, whatever you need to do so you get that energy out. Once you've cleared that from yourself, once you've felt that, maybe it's a good cry that you need to have, that once you've released that, taken a few deep, deep breaths, then guess what? There's a little bit more clarity that's there. Um, I, I need to apologize is that whenever I talk about managing your emotions is that my dog seemed to get involved. Um, um, they want to manage my emotions too. So I'm a little, I don't know what emotions. They're, they're, they're testing you right now. Um, um, no, so that's very important. So you need to bridge that gap between where you are and also gratitude. Because if you're angry and I say, hey, you know what? Um, find that gratitude. You're going to want to knock me out of my chair and turn me into like a turtle on a shell. I mean, I, I've had that happen before. So there's that bridge that you need to, um, that gap that you need to bridge. And uh, through feeling your feelings, because emotions, I, I love this, is that whatever emotion, like a lot of people will say, like, you know, you, you can't be, you can't allow yourself to feel fear. You, you got to be fearless in this world. And while that sounds so heroic and that sounds mm -hmm. so wonderful, fear is natural. Yeah. So to be fearless in my book, it's, it's unnatural. So it's, it's a matter of allowing yourself to feel whatever feeling you're having, not dwelling on it. I feel like if you dwell on something, you're spending too much in, in the past. If you're preoccupied with something, you're too far in the future. So it's, it's being in the moment with those emotions and then being in that moment right here, right now. Um, what am I grateful for? What am I grateful for? Including that experience that just passed that took you to a place of rage or sadness or depression, whatever it was. No, spot on. I, I totally agree with you. And, and the one thing that I uh, like sharing with others is uh, giving yourself permission to be human. And you, know, <laughs> you just called me being human because I was trying not to make any mistakes. And then you said, <laughs> well, you want to be human. I said, well, not now. <laughs> so, but the point is, is, is that I think oftentimes with emotions that that people are quite possibly are just afraid to have those emotions and 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 are also very critical of themselves to have that emotion and quite potentially you know um 
have an issue with their own self-esteem that they put themselves down. And so that they, they, it causes them to suppress it. And so you're absolutely right. I mean, I, I've never heard of this uh, projection suppression expression, but it's spot on. And, and when you get to express it, um, you know, you certainly are basically accepting the fact you know, that you've got this emotion, whatever emotion is, whether it's anger or, or sadness. Um, and you, it's okay. You touched upon it, Dr. Rademacher, though, is that in terms of uh, your intro for your program here, you tell real people, real experiences. I had an audience member ask me not too long ago, Scott, if there was one word that people could best use to describe you, what would you want that word to be? And all of a sudden, I just went into my heart where I find mind thinks, heart knows, go to my knowingness. And the word real was there. And I said mm -hmm. to myself, the more real that I can be, mm -hmm. the more people that I can connect with. And that includes feeling your feelings, whatever emotion it is. The moment where I say, you know what, I don't understand you or how could you be feeling this way is the moment I have disconnected from a fellow human being. So it's almost like I might not be experiencing that emotion in that moment, quite like you, but what I love to do is that, how to could I feel that feeling? How to could I do this? I, I don't believe that there's any experience in this world in which if certain things lined up that I couldn't have as well. And what that allows me, it, it re allows me to remain connected to my fellow human beings to say, how to could I be that way? And that always keeps that link alive with my fellow human beings, no matter what the situation. I, I've been in prisons before speaking to inmates. I've been with president of Fortune 500 corporations. I've met presidents of the United States. And you know what? Everybody, yes, I mean, we all have wonderful titles and everything, but there's always that human being full of emotions, full of feelings, full of real experiences that's in front of you. I love it. You know, being real to yourself is is the best gift that you can give. And and it comes, you know, like you said, it's taking responsibility for who you are, what you do, for the decisions that you've made, you know, and, and not blaming anybody else. And and um, I, I will say that two two things that can help um, is is knowing number one, you know, whatever emotion we have, there's a reason for it. It, it, it makes sense somewhere. It may not be conscious, but just letting yourself know, hey, you know what? There's a reason for my for my anger, and I don't have to justify. I don't have to qualify. And then, and then asking the question, what you said, is you know the how to. And and the second part with what I would share then for people is you know change the meaning, mm. and what we focus on, um, and the meaning we give it also determines how we're going to respond, how we're going to feel. Um, so I want to go on to something else in a moment, but one last thing about gratitude, which I found that really helped with me, that really you know, turbocharged you know, my sense of gratitude and makes it a lot easier, is exercises that are out there that just you, you just start you know, telling yourself what you're grateful for. And at some point I was saying I'm grateful for my big toe you know, or, <laughs> or my hand. And, and you begin to realize that, wow, I mean, the chair that I'm sitting on, you know, somebody put that together. Somebody worked this chair that I'm sitting on now, and I'm grateful for them, for them for putting it together. And it's amazing the, the sense of, of peace that you get to experience by just doing those things. You know, in the moment of despair and anger, it's sometimes hard, you know, to, to be grateful for that particular situation, but you certainly, like you said, can find gratitude for for a lot of other things. I love um, when people do that with food, with regards to the person who who picked this food and the person who washed it and then the person who packaged it and the whole process of from when it was first like a or planted the seed I should say let's say right. it was vegetable and how it got to you and everyone involved. Um, I I love that and giving gratitude to all those people. So I love that exercise you're talking about. You know, I'm going to add one more thing I just thought of, and uh, if I may, um, it, it's about food. Is when you eat food, and and you know, getting back to what you were saying earlier, that you know everything's moving so fast, is that when we get to slow down, 
and particularly when we're eating food, just really noticing, you know, the, the texture and the taste and the temperature of food. And then in that moment, and, and this is something I, I learned from P, uh, Positive Intelligence from uh, uh, Shirzad. And he talks about when you get to be more aware of your environment, then it's almost automatic that you become much more grateful for everything that you have. Mm. Very cool. Absolutely so, resonates. So another thing that has always impressed me, um, and I'm sorry, I'm not giving Sedona much time here, but she's soaking it all in. So that that's cool. Um, and she's a busy girl, so I don't want to. I'm know, grateful for Sedona. There you go. All right. um, attitude. Um, I've always been impressed by your attitude, and I know this is a central part into what you talk about. Absolutely. Um, attitude's everything. Um, every single morning now for almost 33 years, I I've awakened to a waiting wheelchair. And I know that every single day I've gotten into that wi uh, wheelchair, and it it's, it's because of my attitude. And there's that part of me that just feels like, you know what, just by showing up for life and that's orchestrated. I, our attitudes, it, it, it's like our, it, it's our energy. It's like fuel for a car. And either you have a positive attitude or you don't have a positive attitude. You have a negative attitude. And, you know, where is that taking you or and where's a positive attitude taking you? So I just realized through that attitude that kind of starts my day. Mm -hmm and keeps me going that that's the resources that's the energy deep down inside that allows me to go to a place of gratitude it allows me to kind of take a look at all the choices that i may have in a certain situation and so um i i love to help people to cultivate that positive attitude it's not so much of what's not going right in my life but what is going well in my life and those things that may not be going well in my life you know what again feeling your feelings and but you know what, how, how can I possibly change this? How could I renovate this? How could I um, improve upon this? And just uh, exhausting everything that you possibly have. But I, I just, I see too many people in life who are um, going beyond just surviving, they're thriving. And I know that it's all being orchestrated um, by the positive attitude that they're trying to have. Um, for themselves and trying to demonstrate and have an effect on other people as well. You know, an important part of that, what you just shared with us, uh, I think as a coach is, is helping people appreciate, you know, what's actually possible, you know, helping people with more choices. I, I think uh, what happens is that it's called learned helplessness. I mean, if, mm. if we get beaten down all the time and, and we, we don't have choices and, and it hurts us, then we stay in this, you know, kind of funk, if you will. But as a coach or mentors or leaders in this world that, you know, have overcome any kind of challenge, um, giving us, you know, new ideas. And actually that's the main reason this platform is to help people see, yeah, there are other possibilities than the ones that you, that you thought of. And so one question I have for you is when it comes down to attitude, I mean, are you uh, also consciously focusing on on your compelling future, your purpose in life, so that you can tap into that energy? I, I am. I, and I, I don't spend too much time um, in the future. Um, I, I was working with one of my life coaching clients earlier, mm -hmm. and I realized that he was so uh, preoccupied uh, with the future. And uh, so I was explaining into a, like uh, life being a car. And I said, if, you, if you're driving that car and you're looking at your rear view mirror or your side mirrors um, too much, meaning you're focused too much on the past, you're going to get in an accident. But yet you have those mirrors there and you're looking at them and you're glancing at them from time to time and you're understanding what's behind you, but you're not spending too much time on it. And then if you're looking too far ahead up to that exit or where you're driving and you're spending too much time wondering what's way up there, then guess what? You're going to get an accident as well. You're going to hit that person in front of you. So it's kind of being aware of, you know what, I, I need to plan. I need to strategize. Um, and I need to learn from my past. But all that is done in as 
being more present, being more mindful that we can in each and every moment. And one of those things that really helped me and um, helps me get back to where I am is just that breath. Um, I realize that my breath is in each and every moment. And the moment I connect with that, whether it be a deep breath or just bringing attention to it, I know that's my go-to. I'm back in the moment and that allows me to really be in a place of awareness and understanding what's going on. Yeah, my, my life changed dramatically when I began to just stay in this moment, be present. And it's the coolest thing, actually, because, you know, a lot of us learn to uh, not to look when we're talking to people. And, you know, I've shifted that. Um, and now just it's it's a wonderful experience when you just connect with that person, take all, of, you know, their expression and their essence in. And I know that one of my, my coaching clients, um, I told him, he says, look, you know, next time you go out for dinner, you know, make sure that everybody puts their phones away and just connect with your family. And he said, you know, my life totally changed because of that. And you're right. I think too often we're just simply not present. And and by not being present, you know, we miss so much uh, of what's happening around us. I I, I, um, I used to criticize my kids when you know, we watch movies and they'd be jabbering this and talking about this. And, you know, they say, oh, yeah, I can watch this movie. But, you know, you miss so much out of it. And I think I think you're spot on. I have to say, though, um, there was a time when I was going for my driver's license in Holland. And <laughs> and boy, those guys are really tough because they don't want cars. In fact, in 2025, <laughs> I think, there's going to be major cities that you can't drive a car. And so, um, so this was a long time ago, and I failed my test. Do you know why I failed my test? Um, the, you weren't using your mirrors. Right. Not enough. <laughs> <laughs> So I failed it, and then I didn't get my driver's license, so I came to the United States, and I was 28, and I just went around the the block, and that was it. Um, well, if it makes you feel any better, I failed parallel parking. Now, now the question is, ask me, being a person with a disability, how often I have to parallel park. I have enough never? fingers on both hands for the 20-something years I've been driving, so um, I don't know. I don't know. Well, I don't like parallel parking either. Um, <laughs> So on another note, um, you know, one thing that, that really stops us, and I know as a coach, you know, we, we work a lot with um, the blocks that we have. And I think, and, and it's interesting um, because uh, I learned this, you know, working with Tony Robbins and, and his company, and I was trained by his company, great company for coaching, by the way. Um, and we should get you there too. Um, <laughs> but it's it's about what prevents what prevents us from moving forward in life and that was such a great insight for me because then you start working with your clients and and helping them identify something that's so obvious that they're not willing to accept for themselves mm. and so one of which is fear and so i know you talk about fear and and you have a particular way of of I'm approaching it. Yes, uh, actually giving a talk tomorrow on unparalyze your fear. And because uh, I, I, I will say it is that the fear um, that is that we create emotionally and mentally is far more paralyzing than any type of physical paralysis I'm sitting before you with today. And um, it wreaks havoc on our dreams it annihilates our goals and it really prevents us from fulfilling our true potential. And so it's um, so debilitating and normally, and you probably see this with people that you work with all the time, that's usually the number one culprit as to why people aren't moving forward in their lives. And what's interesting, they've done a lot of studies on this is that a lot of people might think that it's because there's a fear of failure. And, um, I would say 95% of the people who I work with who tell me that they have some kind of fear of failure. And after hearing their stories, I'm like, you know what? You're not afraid of failing. You're actually already there. You're already failing in your life. It's that, that fear of success. It's that fear of becoming what maybe we don't feel we're deserving of that really frightens us. 
but yet we are deserving of all of that and deserving of being the best version of ourselves. So it, it's that stepping into one's power. I mean, I even tell people, Dr. Rademacher, that I, I know to this day, and it's still here, I know that I have, it, I'm going to say a tremendous fear of getting up on my feet and walking again. I mean, you ask me right now, like, would I do anything to get up there? Yeah, I'd do anything. But I know still rooted in my subconscious is a tremendous fear. And I know it's aligned with just the comfort zone. We create comfort zones in our life. It's lined with the comfort zone that I have created now for 33 years and kind of insulated myself um, with paralysis, with living life with a disability. And so there's that part of me that knows that to really transcend that fear, I have to realize that all the gifts, all the wonderful things that have resulted in my being paralyzed, you know, when, not if I get back on my feet again, all those gifts will still come with me. I just don't need to carry around paralysis anymore. Well, I'm, I'm going to make a public commitment to, to you and the rest of the world that I'm here on that journey with you to help you make that happen. Thank you. And, and Thank in you. whatever way I can make that happen, I'm there. Thank you. Um, so, but I do have a question though. And, and why is it that you think people are, uh, why is it that people talk more about fear of failure when it's not that? <laughs> I, I just think that they feel that they're deserving of that in a way. So it's, um, I don't know. I mean, people really aren't coming to you with this uh, when, when things are necessarily going very well. Obviously, through coaching them, you can identify so much of what's going well in their life and you can build upon that. But they're really coming to you because there's a part of them. They might not recognize it in the beginning but that they are either failing to some degree or heading down a path of failure. So whether it's that fear of experiencing even more failure, it's actually quite an interesting phenomenon. But as, as always, it's that fear of what we can become. I mean, it's, it's interesting how many of us, and I, I include us because in certain areas of my life, I, I have and probably still, um, I play small from time to time. Mm -hmm. And rather than living large and being everything that I'm capable of becoming. And um, it's all, all traced back to fear. You know, it's an interesting thought because um, I, I've noticed it myself at times that um, that fear of, of that success and then thinking, well, can I maintain that success? Can I keep the energy and the drive? to keep whatever it is that I create at that level. And I, I, I know there, there's so much more inside of us. And, you know, we talk about the 10 X or the 20 X and you, you know, you listen to Mark divine, you know, the Navy seal of an unbeatable mind and the way of the seal, great, great uh, books to read, to discover that 20 X factor inside of you. And I think what happens then is that, you know, when, when we're not going for it, you know, when we're holding back, it's almost like you're you're telling the little kid inside of yourself that you're not good enough, and mm. and you're telling and and it's a loss of that integrity of your soul gets challenged because you know you're not letting yourself you know be the the fulfilled uh, prophecy that that you actually have within yourself that you're not allowing yourself to happen. I mean, your thoughts right. on that. I, I, I totally agree. I, I, I totally agree. I just, and what I coach people on is just taking that fear, whatever the fear may be, and, and turning it into energy and, and leveraging that energy because that, that's all it is. It's, it's just energy. When applied to something in a more positive manner, um, it can elevate your life. It could help you regain focus. It can spark creativity. Um, but right now I just see the, the fear as being more debilitating and that's kind of like hanging on to it. I mean, one of the things, and I'll, I'll be discussing this tomorrow, which is if you think of any exciting new experience that you're going to have, there's a part of you obviously that gets all excited and all revved up. And then all of a sudden within a short period of time is that all of a sudden your mind gets a hold of it and said, whoa, 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 let me remind you of times when you have failed. 
Let me remind you when, of times that things haven't worked out. And it's like, yeah, why, why does that happen? Why, why do we go to that place? And it's because our, our minds where that's the only place fear exists is that it hates change. It hates new experiences. So what does it love to do? It loves to knock you back in the past, remind you of times when you have failed, times when things haven't worked out because then it has control over you. And, and this is such a, a debilitating pattern too many of us are going through on a daily basis. And I, I'd say we, we need to do a head heart shift. Again, the head thinks, the mind knows. I meant the head thinks, the heart knows. And I'd much rather being my knowingness. And this is where our courage resides. This is where our belief that anything po is possible resides. So the quicker that I can get from here, where my fear resides, to here, where any type of experience that I've ever had, where I've transcended fear, it, it's come from here. Um, but this is this is leading the way. We're conditioned to to listen to our minds, to answer to that voice in our head. Whereas I've tried to recondition myself and help others to listen to what goes on here. Because when this is leading the way, then this follows. And then this serves you in the form of creativity and imagination. And I don't want you to think this is a bad thing. This is a wonderful thing. But when it's leading the way, that's when it's very debilitating. And that's when it's so lined in fear. You know, there's that expression, just go for it. And and that's sometimes what you have to do. And maybe it takes 10 seconds or 20 seconds of total insanity. Um, I, I got <laughs> that that line from um, We Bought a Zoo um, yeah. <laughs> movie. And, and it's so true. And, and you know, if, if we just allow ourselves to have that momentary uh, lapse of, of sanity into insanity and, and make a decision and then see it play through and work out, it actually builds on your own self-confidence and it's getting out of that comfort zone. And I just learned the other day, you know, one of the books I was reading, you know, even if it's just a little bit out of your comfort zone, constantly getting a little bit out of your comfort zone, constantly getting there. It's just building and building and building and building. And, and I come from the premise and, and part of the reason for the show then is, you know, what we don't know that we don't know was going to make all the difference. <laughs> and so just by learning, by listening, by seeing the great, great people like yourself out there and, and uh, you know, giving us new insights is going to help us overcome that fear. And you get you become much more aligned. And I totally agree with you. I mean, it's all it's all in the heart. And, and I just go back. My father was an engineer, you know, and very, absolutely brilliant guy. And um, but I, I, I know that I learned so many different things from him, how to behave that really didn't serve me. And I mm -hmm. think that's what happens with most of us is that we have all this learned behavior and you know, we lose our freedom by the age of four or five, depending on when you went, went to kindergarten. And, um, and we're taught to behave in a certain way, but it doesn't serve us. And so, you know, we're, we're told to be strong and, and tough and, and not, you know, be in your heart. And, and I love being in my heart. Um, you know, I don't, you know, necessarily cry much in front of people, but I allow myself to cry in the moments because it, like you said, it's, it's liberating. It, it's freeing. So when you talk about, you know, two things, which I know is important, living from your heart and managing your emotions, you know, how, how, what are you telling your, your clients or what are you, what are you actually sharing? you know, on your, in your, on your talks and presentations. Just giving yourself permission to get, giving yourself permission to feel whatever it is that you're feeling. And I, I don't think we do that enough. I think we, we squash those emotions. I, I think we kind of avoid different situations rather than, you know, what I'm feeling this way right now. Uh, I want to cry. I, I want to cry tears of joy. I want to cry tears of sadness and anything in between. And just allowing ourselves to feel that. Now, if you're kind of feeling that same emotion like a few hours later, then, you know, we might have to have a talk. But it's knowing full well that these emotions are, are natural. I mean, there's, there's not one emotion that you can share with me that's not natural. Maybe you don't experience a lot. Maybe you should be experiencing a lot. I don't know. But it, it, it's first and foremost giving yourself permission. So what, what's happening in that moment? So you, you might see it. Somebody might be at a movie or something and someone might 
starting to get welled up and might want to cry, but we kind of like suppress that. Not because you're going to be so loud in the movie theater, but it's almost like, let's just let them flow. Let the tears flow. Um, whatever they may be. And you know what? Allow yourself to experience that emotion. You can rationalize it, rationalize it later. I, I want to take that, that, that Nike slogan, you know, just do it and dot, dot, dot. Mm-hmm. Think about it later. Because the more, like, if we can just just do it and react, but you know what? A lot of times we we hang on to stuff and we start to rationalize it and think about it too much, and, and that's when we have that tendency to go to fear. That's when we have that tendency not to go to that experience that's just waiting for us or to hold off on something. And it's it's just by hanging on too long, and that's when our mind gets a hold of it and our. It, oof. It's, it's amazing how debilitating. I mean, we talked about attitude before. I mean, a, a negative attitude is coming directly from here. Positive attitude, I can tell you, is coming from here. That's simple. So, so let me ask. We just got the five-minute warning. And that's, that's my good cue to get Sedona involved. I thought because... Sedona was just waving to us, no? Okay, no, 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 no. <laughs> and and I, I, I moved heaven and earth to have Sedona back with me because I, I just totally like and enjoy her insights. So... Um, your emotions, Sedona. You're you're the girl here. You get to go first about emotions, and then I'm going to share um, with you guys, and I'm going to hear from Scott. You know what what makes you cry the most? But we'll we'll start off with Sedona. Oh boy, um, what does and it you mean? don't you don't have to answer it by the way. Um, I think one thing that really gets me is well, I work in a newsroom, so uh, we really have to keep things objective and we fight really hard to tell the truth about everything from every side. And one thing that really gets to me is when I'm flipping through uh, articles or looking through videos and people don't give journalism the same respect that we strive to at the Cronkite School. Um, And one thing that uh, really gets me is there's so, there are just so many things going on all the time in the country. And that's that's something that um, reporters like me have to deal with all that time is kind of, you almost like take on the stress that you're right. reporting about from uh, your colleagues or from people just in the nation. Um, and lately that's been hard watching, um, watching some of the policies that go down or um, watching all the protests lately and just, Seeing those and you just try to remember that everybody's everybody's just fighting for what they believe in and you just have to keep that in mind. Yeah, I, I, spot on. I mean, it's tough to see all that happen. And, you know, that's, you know, my eagerness, and I know Scott's eagerness too, is just we want to help the rest of the world just to see things differently. And, um, and I talk about tapping into the collective wisdom to generate uh, for generative collaboration. You know, that's, again, what this platform is. And that's why I bring people like Scott. So thank you for being really uh, vulnerable and honest there, uh, uh, Sedona. Now you, Scott, what, what makes you cry? And we, we, you, got, you only have 30 seconds. I, I'll tell you right now, it's when uh, people are real. Um, when I see them being real and I see their eyes well up or I know that they're speaking from their heart, they're acting from their heart, they're doing something um, to connect more with themselves and other people, um, I feel that energy and I, I feel that interconnectedness and that gets me emotional, very emotional. And and um, that's awesome. And and I, I will share with mine and I know <clears throat> um, I'm, I'm trying to hurry up here a little bit because I want to get something else out of you. But for me personally, what really chokes me up is then when I see somebody, you know, overcome these tremendous odds and they succeed. And 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 the first I noticed that, you know, watching the Olympic Games, the gymnastics and seeing these young kids do these most incredible things. It's like, wow, you know, human potential at its best. And so I get choked up when I see these people with, you know, sh- demonstrating what human potential really is all about. So last thing that I, that I want to hear from you is how do people find you? Um, you've got a book coming out or a documentary coming out or lots of things are happening. So please share with us a little bit about you. And you got about 60 seconds, I think, 
because then Sedona will cut us off. Uh, and she's like, yeah, I will. <laughs> uh, so you can reach me. My website really has everything these days. It's uh, www.scottchesney. So it's S-C-O-T-T-C-H-E-S-N-E-Y.com. Um, whether it's uh, wanting me to do a speaking presentation to be coached by me, but we also uh, have information on the documentary. There's a documentary on my life that's coming out in November. It's called Ride the Wave. Awesome. And yeah, it, there's a little bit to do with surfing in there, but it's mostly about riding the waves of life and knowing full well that they're coming in full force and we could be on the top of a wave and everything going well, or we can be in one of its valleys and wipe out, in which guess what? We'll resurface and there'll be more waves waiting for us. So it's going to, everyone's going to be taking their own journey of self-discovery in, in watching this film. Very excited about it. I, I love it. I know you're coming up with a, an app, you know, a mobile app that's going to be uh, uh, showcasing a lot of your stuff. I'm actually going to be doing that same app or a similar app. And I know you got this great talk tomorrow. Where's that talk? Talks at the Sheraton in New York City, but it's also available online through the PDA app. Um, so it's the personal development app. If you want to get it for free, um, you can watch it. I'll be the first one on 10 o'clock in the morning, uh, Eastern Standard Time. So come listen to me for 15 minutes. That's all. A ch- I, life changer, game changer. I love it. I, I, I think I might be getting a haircut at 10 o'clock, but I'll make sure I, I chime in. <laughs> all right, Scott, thank you so much, Sedona. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank um, you. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it's all from the heart. And uh Remember my commitment to you as well. Thank you. Again, I'm Dr. Bart Ryan, make a prescription for your transformation, real people, real conversations, real success. Tapping into that authentic genius that's inside all of us, living the life you desire, and most importantly, discovering that intelligence that's all around us. Thank you so much.